It was all hands on deck north of Kimball yesterday as a Humvee carrying ammunition and grenades catches fire. KDB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. And our top story, Highway 71 remained closed from near Harrisburg to Kimball today as a military explosive ordnance team works to render safe the scene of a Humvee fire north of Kimball. Yesterday afternoon around 2 p.m., security forces airmen from F.E. Warren Air Force Base in Cheyenne had to stop and exit their vehicle due to a fire, and due to the intensity of the flames, were unable to remove ammunition and 40 millimeter grenades inside. A security cordon was established, and deputies and firefighters arrived from Kimball, the State Patrol, and Nebraska Department of Transportation to help deal with traffic, the vehicle fire, and grass fires that ignited nearby. The NSP maintained the road closure today as a team from the 90th Explosive Ordnance Disposal Flight conducted a series of controlled detonation, which was expected to take much of the day today. The cause of the fire is unknown at this time, and the incident is under investigation. Well, a well-known name on the campaign trail will be in Gehring this week, as Donald Trump Jr. is scheduled to make an appearance with Republican gubernatorial candidate Charles Herbster. The oldest son of former President Donald Trump will take part of a meet and greet with Herbster tomorrow at the Gehring Civic Center. The stop is one of three joint campaign appearances scheduled in the state the same day, with another meet and greet in North Platte and a Nebraska First celebration in Grand Island later in the day on Wednesday. We'll have more news right after this. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether it is building, buying, or renovating, we have the home loan or home equity line of credit to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Scottsbluff County's most contested races appearing on the May primary ballot is the Scottsbluff City Council race, as nine people are vying for three vacancies. Candidates include incumbents Jeannie McCarrigan, Nathan Green, and Selena Lerma, as well as challengers Eugene Bott, Betsy Vidlack, Chris Miller, Eric Ferguson, Matthew Solomon, and Kendall Palou. During a debate last week hosted by the Chamber of Commerce, the candidates shared what they felt the biggest issue facing the city is. One of the things that hasn't been mentioned was senior housing, affordable he uh, senior housing. As uh, our, work, our people grow older, as I have, uh, they tend to look at downsizing. We need to, and in the process of downsizing, they create other homes and that can be uh, available to their general public. The workforce, which I know the Scottsbluff Schools has worked very well with the businesses here locally to help um, with the Career Academy and growing our workforce in that area in industries. Uh, we also have a housing shortage. I, I think one of the, the biggest issues right now is, is having that city manager and getting a city manager in place, right? So that's obviously a very crucial position um, with, the, with the city and it leads the employees and is that you know liaison to to the council so hiring the city manager a city manager that can give this community what we what we expect and not one that we're going to have here for a year or so um, so vetting that candidate is very important I think handling inflation is going to be a big problem in the future it's going to jump prices up so much that it's going to be everything uh, including housing and so on. It's, it's going to be quite unaffordable for a lot of people in this area. 
one of the bigger issues that ebbs and flows with the economy is uh, funding. The city, um, a lot of the funding you know is driven by sales tax and right now things are well, but I can see that ebbing and flowing and it's not constant depending on the economy and how things are going locally. I think that's uh, very important. You know, he's the, he's the leader of the city and uh, we really need somebody here that uh, can, can lead. But really with that, it, it takes, uh, it's kind of twofold. It's a collaboration with, with council and then also with, with uh, the residents of, of the city. The top six vote getters will move on to the November general election. To see each of the candidates' profiles, you can find this story on our website at kdb.com. Well, coming up for the break, wind is coming back into the region. Bill Boyer's got your Tuesday evening forecast right after this. Western CPAP Supply has earned an impeccable professional reputation within the Wyoming and Western Nebraska region. Helping you get a good night's sleep is our passion. Our amazing team understands sleep disorders from a personal and professional level. We use CPAPs and BiPAPs too, and sometimes it just helps to work with people who share common ground. Our accredited CPAP supply company is approved by Medicare and Medicaid and is in network with every major insurance company in the region. Western CPAP Supply, we're here to help. Hydrozen, unplug and recharge. What is Hydrozen? It's total body relaxation. It's total body recharge. It's floating weightless on water. Floating your aches, pains, stresses, and worries away. Hydrozen is a revolutionary new therapy using Epsom salt saturated water as a way to relax and rejuvenate your body. And it's now available in Scott's Bluff. It is for most ages and has many benefits to the mind and body. Visit hydrozenfloat.com or call us at 308-63-FLOAT. The Verizon family is full of frowns because they're spending too much for their unlimited data and phones, while the Viero family is all smiles because they're getting four lines of unlimited data with two free Apple iPhone SE for mom and dad and two free LG K31 smartphones for the kids, all for just $100 a month. They're saving so much, they're able to get Fido. Find out how you can too at Viero.com or your nearest Viero store. Viero Wireless, keeping you connected. This is KNEB.TV Weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Well, across the area this evening, it's going to be windy to start, and uh, winds aren't going to go down a ton overnight. They will decrease some, but still 15 to 20 mile an hour winds through the night into tomorrow with clearing skies. More wind is on the way, though. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's still coming. Precip's going to miss us primarily. Tomorrow, it looks like downright cold. Maybe a bit warmer for the weekend. Let's take a look at our almanac from yesterday, 63 after a morning low of 23. Rain gauge wise, nothing out there. We're now four tenths plus below normal for the month and year. Well, here's all you need to know. Look at this area out in front of this cold front. Obviously, the the cold front uh, pretty easy to tell where it lies here across Nebraska and uh, portions of the Dakotas. As that cold front pushes out to the east, there is a ton of of moisture and warm air coming up behind it, and that is setting the stage for some strong and severe thunderstorms. Uh, that they've got out in uh, central and eastern portions of Nebraska. And there's going to continue to be some strong thunderstorms here this evening. That is where we're at. Now, on the back side of the system, that is where we've had the northerly, uh, northwesterly flow of winds coming in all day long, keeping temps colder and uh, downright blizzard conditions going on in uh, portions of uh, the Dakotas. So uh, all those areas, uh, again, experiencing issues with that so take your poison uh you can be on uh, whichever side you want uh but all of us are in the windy front and uh, that's going to continue here this evening let's take a look uh, closer to home on temperature wise we're in that northwesterly flow you can see the 50s off to our east 30s and 40s for most of the rest of us wind still very gusty 30 35 gusts 45 50 miles an hour and wind chills in the teens and 20s for the most part except in far eastern portions of the area. Getting on the bus tomorrow, there's going to be quite a bit of sun. It's just going to be downright chilly. 17 on your way to school. On the way home, it'll be windy again. In the upper 30s? Yeah, that is a cold afternoon coming our way tomorrow. It's just going to be a raw day all the way around. Nothing going on here future cast wise It is quiet. Just a few clouds moving overhead tonight. That is it. 
Lows overnight going to be in the teens, maybe even a single digit. Look at that, nine in Lusk. Burr. Now, tomorrow we start the day with uh, partly to mostly sunny skies, and we're going to end the day with uh, just a few clouds overhead. That's really about it. Northwesterly flow continues, dragging in that cold air, continuing here across the high plains as it's going to remain cold here in our area. And uh, really, tomorrow even colder than where we were today. Temperatures 30s to near 40 at best. Look at Lusk at 29 for a high tomorrow. Nothing coming in terms of precip. Everything's going to stay well to our west and southwest. We might see an inch of snow maybe around the Cheyenne area and points to the west of there, but I think most of it's going to stay out of our region. Tonight, gusty winds this evening, otherwise mostly clear, cold, 16 for a low. Tomorrow, not uh, very warm at all, quite cold. In fact, 40 for a high with mostly sunny skies. Our seven-day forecast will be in the upper 40s Thursday, uh, not as windy maybe. Breezy conditions return for good Friday, upper 50s, both Friday, Saturday. Easter Sunday, maybe around 60 and windy. You'll notice Monday we are cooler. And then finally Tuesday we get back into some warmer temperatures, but the wind's still going to stick around for a chunk of next week as well. This is KNEB.TV Ag News from the FNBO Ag Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. The market value of agricultural land in Nebraska increased by 16% over the prior year to an average of $3,360 per acre, according to the preliminary results of the 2022 Nebraska Farm Real Estate Market Survey. Jessica Groskopf, Nebraska Extension Ag Economist and a co-author of the report, says... So as expected, we actually saw that the value of agricultural land in Nebraska has increased, and it increased 16% um, from the previous report in the 2022 Nebraska Farm Real Estate Survey. So um, again, we're seeing those value of agricultural land increase, um, but there's differences as we move across the state, and particularly when we move across different types of land in a region. In the Panhandle, the largest increase was in center pivot irrigated cropland, up 19%, and the area with the lowest increase was hayland, up 7%. For rental rates, Groskopf says they generally run a bit behind. So um, we'll see a similar percentage um, sometimes, but, but generally it lags a little bit, right, because lease agreements actually started on March 1st in the state of Nebraska. It'll take them a little while to catch up, so they don't rise nearly as fast and they don't fall nearly as fast. Groskopf adds lease agreements are long-term and not negotiated on an annual basis, which can contribute to the rise and fall of the rates. To view the entire report, visit cap.unl.edu forward slash real estate.
let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar. The Community Calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. First State Bank is now Riverstone Bank. Community strong with the same people you know and trust. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. And finally tonight, early childhood programs in Scottsdale and Garing Public Schools received a boost from the Nebraska Department of Education this week. The two districts are among nine across the state to be selected for grants of $155,000 each for early childhood expansion for next school year. In Garing, the grant will be used to help fund the full day preschool classroom expansion at Guile Elementary. For Scotts Bluff, a second full day classroom will be added at Bear Cub Preschool with $25,000 going to startup costs and the balance for operational expenses such as furniture, supplies, salaries, and playground equipment. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. I'll see you here next time.